Hi everyone! Today we will talk about classes. In Python, we use classes to create something called objects. An object is made out of attributes and methods, where attributes represent data about the object, for example, the name, the color, the speed, and so on, and methods represent functionality or tasks that the object can do, for example, adjust the speed or maybe change the color dynamically. The following example represents the class fruit, where we can find two different attributes, name and color. We can create attributes by using the self parameter followed by the name of the attribute. And then we of course assign it to a value of our choice. In our case, apple and red. Then we can call our fruit class and assign it to a variable name, just like we do with regular functions. We can easily access attribute values by typing the name of the object, my fruit, followed by the name of the attribute we would like to get. We can also easily adjust these attributes by typing my fruit dot color equals green or my fruit dot name equals kiwi. And that way, we are not restricted to the initial values we have selected. And actually, this example doesn't quite reflect the full purpose of classes. Since we have hard-coded apple and red, we are very limited whenever we'd like to create a different kind of fruit object. A better approach would be collecting these attribute values as parameters inside our init function, which I'll explain in detail shortly. So what we've done here is we have assigned parameters to our attributes. And that way, each time we create a new instance of the class fruit, we get to pass different kinds of arguments to it, which will create a different kind of fruit object. And that way, we are not limited to apples only. We can easily create bananas and kiwis and so on. Cool, so we have covered the attributes which represent data regarding our object. But what about methods? In this example, we have created a method called details. And even though it looks like a traditional function, the main difference is we must pass the self parameter to this function, which will then make it a method. We can think of methods as functions related to objects which then makes our init function a method as well. And when we pass the self parameter from method to method, a really cool thing happens. We can then access the same attributes we defined in init inside the body of our new details method. So even though these two methods have two completely different scopes, the self keyword ensures that all the attributes are accessible by all the methods. And then we can easily call these methods by specifying the name of the object, followed by the name of the method, and then a set of brackets. Now let's have a look at a common mistake. Let's say we completely forgot about the self parameter and we have initialized a new variable called expiration date inside init. Now, whenever we try to access this variable with our details method, we get a name error. And the reason why we get this error is because expiration date is a local variable of init. And because it is local, it is not global, details knows nothing about it. And actually, there are two different ways to solve it. We can either add the self parameter in front of expiration date, and then we turn it into an attribute, or alternatively, we can still leave it as a variable, but we initialize it inside details rather than inside init. And that way we can avoid all the scope issues without turning expiration date into an attribute. Cool. And now that we've seen some examples, let's talk about the init method and why it is so significant. Now, first of all, init is where we initialize all our attributes. And the reason why we initialize them there 
is because init is automatically executed with every new class instance. So as you probably noticed, we never had to call init. We only defined it. And yet, it was automatically executed without any extra involvement on our end. Another reason why init is so special is because it has a reserved name. We cannot call it out it or in any other name that we choose. Init remains in it no matter what. Another important detail to go over is the self parameter, which always represents the current instance of the class. So whenever we pass it from method to method, we still refer to the same object. However, whenever we create a new instance of the class, a new object, the self keyword will then have a completely different meaning. For example, self, in the case of Apple, represents the Apple object itself, while in the case of banana, it no longer knows anything about the apple, but represents the banana object itself. And if you're coming from JavaScript, self is the equivalent of this, while class is the equivalent of a constructor function. In both cases, classes or constructors, they represent object-oriented programming, which is a very organized set of principles for software development. So instead of simply working with data and calling lone standing functions on that data, we bundle the data with the functionality and we work with objects instead. Perfect. And now that we've learned about classes, I can finally start using a bit more technical terms inside our GUI projects. From now on, the functions within the scope of our class will be called methods and the variable names with the prefix of self will be called attributes. And then whenever we assign a variable name to a class instance, we will no longer call it a variable, but an object. Awesome. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We still need to go over the super init function in the next few tutorials, but this video should give you the basic tools to understand classes and hopefully it made them less intimidating. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please give me a like, maybe leave me a comment or subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, or even share this video with people who are not very comfortable with classes just yet. Now, thanks again, and I'll see you very, very soon.